Hello, friends. Many times in my classroom, students ask me, how do I make skin color? So I'm going to tell you a little bit about color theory to help you remember all the different ways you can make skin color. This is a color wheel, and if you go from red all the way across to green, these are called complementary colors. So the complement of blue, if you go across, is orange. The complement to yellow is violet or purple. And even the tertiaries, yellow, orange, and blue, violet. These are all complementary colors. But we're gonna stick to the primaries and secondaries for this lesson. In college, I was taught that when you mix complementary colors, you get a neutral gray. But with most of the paints I've ever seen in schools, I find that it comes out more like a brown. And that's when I realized there's so many beautiful shades of tan and brown that I can probably use this anytime I want to paint skin colors. So these are the materials you'll need. I have some goose paper. This is paper that was going to get thrown out, but it's still good on one side. This is where I'll do some practice and just look at my work. I have my watercolors, a paintbrush, some water, a paper towel, and my color wheel to help me. But I'm gonna move this to the side so I can put my paper on my work mat and keep my table clean. Okay, in my classroom, all my students have access to a color wheel like this, and these are the tempera cakes we use. So <clears throat> these tempera cakes are really handy because they wash off pretty easily, and I let my students sort of mix and match all over. So I'm gonna start with one combination, red and green. I'm gonna get some water, I'm gonna wake up the red. It needs a lot of water. Swirl it around, and I'm gonna wake up the green, and swirl it around. And I'm gonna mix these colors and later on I'll wipe them off because I think mixing colors is really how you learn how they work together. Oh, look at this. This is a pretty nice brown with a red tint. Look at that. So red and green in combination make that really nice rich brown. All right, another combination would be purple and yellow because they're complementary colors. So I don't have a really good purple. I have magenta instead. This magenta is closest to red violet. So using color theory, I have to go across and use yellow green, but I don't have yellow green. My regular green just got a little bit messed up. So I'm going to clean the red off of that and I'm going to make a yellow green. Here's some green. I'm gonna add it to the yellow. So I'm making a yellow green. I'm gonna pick up some more water to make sure I have enough paint. The tricky thing about tempera cakes is sometimes you don't make enough of the color you want. Well, I'm mixing my yellow green with my magenta, my red violet, and here we go. That's a little bit too green for me, so you have to experiment. I'm gonna keep rolling and maybe make it a little more yellow. Ooh. Look at this, if I put it on the yellow, that seems to be working. Here's a nice deep tan color, still a little too green for me. I'm gonna take off some of that green. I still want some of the green, but not too much. And a little more red violet. All right, here we go. There we go, that's a nice brown right there. The last combination would be blue and orange. Now, I have a royal blue right here and a teal blue right here. Maybe we'll try both because really to learn about color theory, you need to experiment and, and wonder a little bit about what works best. The other thing is, if you're using printer paper at home or printer ink, they have this blue is actually called cerulean. So. Cerulean looks close to that teal blue. I might try that and see if that works better. This looks pretty good. Here's a nice tan brown color. Now, let's experiment. I'm gonna wipe off that orange that had the royal blue. And I'm gonna wake up the blue-green, which is really close to this cerulean blue. And let's see. If we combine that with orange, what happens? All 
All right, we have a lot of nice brown colors here. Now, <clears throat> if I wanna get a nice peachy tone, I need to make it a tint by adding some white. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this color, I'm gonna add it to my white. I have to wake up that white and get the white creamy. It's taking a little while. Is this a peachy color? It's getting there. It's a little bit on the gray side. I think I need a little more pink in there. So this magenta is kind of pink-ish. Again, you need to really mess around. Oh, it's a little bit too pink. It looks like someone's been out in the sun. To make the opposite of pink, tone it down a little bit. Get some of that one and add it. So as you can see, you can make all kinds of colors, but you have to mix and match. The basics are use complementary colors, experiment a little, and if you want to make a tint, you add white. All right, so these are temper cakes. Don't eat them. I hope you enjoyed learning about color theory. In my classroom, temper cakes work really well to make skin tones. However, when you use watercolors, this chart really does make sense because these colors often do turn into gray when you mix the complementary colors. So instead, when you're mixing watercolors, there's different things you need to do. You're basically going to use yellow, orange, red, and you can mix in a little bit of this brown. And you're not going to make the paint really thick, you're going to make it watered down. You're going to use your palette here. I'm going to load my brush with water. I already put a drop in to wake it up. I'm gonna pick up some yellow paint and I'm gonna put it right here. Now, the reason I'm putting it here is I'm going to add some colors to make a nice skin tone. I'm going to start with a very light skin tone. That's a little bit too light. Let's see. It's kind of orangey. So I'm just going to put a dab of red in there. It's still a little peachy. So when you want to tone something down, if it's a little bit too orange, look across and maybe if you get the teeniest, teeniest bit of a color, like the tiniest drop of blue, that just tones it down a little bit. And then, in watercolor, you add water to make it very thin. So here's a test. That's pretty peachy. It's still a little bit on the yellow tone. So a little bit of purple might tone down my yellow. Let's see. Well, that's as close as I think we're gonna get with watercolors. So let me show you how you can use it on your painting. First of all, I'm afraid this won't be enough, so I have to mix up a little bit more. Didn't I use a little bit of purple to just tone it down? Now I'm gonna add that water to thin it down, and when I paint it, it's going to be very thin because this is watercolor, it's very transparent. But this is how you make a, a light skin tone and this is a little bit yellowish, but for my first time, I think it's going to be just fine. Now, I started with a very light color. I want a darker color for another one of my hands. So I'm going to leave that there and I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. Now, since you have watercolor, you can use some brown in there. Let's test this. Oh, there's a nice red, reddish tan there. So I'm going to use that reddish tan because I have a lot loaded, I have a lot mixed up. I'll put it in my brush and I'm going to paint it on. Notice it's very different from the temper cakes. This is a very thin color. It's transparent. That's what's nice about watercolors. And if this is what you have in your house, instead of temper cakes from school, it's going to work very well for you. And I did have to practice this last night. 
it's not that easy. So I want to show you all the sample scrap papers I used before I made this video. This is a combination of papers. Some of these are tempera cakes and some of these are watercolors. I think this is one of the watercolor ones. This is one of the watercolor practice sheets. So even though I'm doing this here and you think it looks great, it took me a long time to figure this stuff out. Now I'm going to do another darker brown this time. What did I just do there? All right, I'm gonna start with a dark brown right out of the palette. Now, strangely, I just wanna make it a little darker, but instead of using black, I'm gonna use a little purple. Let's see how that looks. There's a rich brown. All right, I'm gonna use this right on this hand. We are made up of so many beautiful different skin tones in this world that, and it looks really great when you compare them by putting them in contrast next to each other because they really complement each other. It would be pretty boring if everybody looked exactly the same. And here we go with some brown. Now, you have three different skin tones here and you can go ahead and practice on your own. Don't forget to get goose paper. You know goose paper is paper that is good on one side. Someone's going to throw this out, but I said no, I will save that. And I hope you have fun experimenting. Did I mention I already did two of these paintings yesterday to figure this out? This one is watercolor, and this one is the tempera cakes, but I don't think too many people have tempera cakes at home. That's why I really focused on watercolor today. All right, I can't wait to see all your artwork.